Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 81. Day Day 3081, 3 is to indicate that we are in the third edition, third edition day 81, we are on page 290 and the topic that we'll discuss today is histogram, very simple, very straightforward topic, histogram. We are about to do example 4.1.10, 4.1.10 on page 290, the data that we're going to use for this example 4.1.10 that we are about to do, the, the data that we're going to use comes from Example 4.1.3, which you will find on page number 286, which we covered on day 3078. Let's get going. So, we have a survey that we have conducted where we asked 25 people. We surveyed 25 people and we simply asked them, How many kids do you have? And here are the results 12041, 1, 33132, 35232, 45232, 34212, 32421, 32421, and finally 3023. 3022, 3021. Once we take care of the data, we're going to erase this thing, we're going to plot our histogram here. So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's take the tally. Let's, uh, let's make a frequency distribution. Let's make a frequency distribution. So here are the children. Number of children that is, number of children, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. First we'll put together, obviously, the absolute frequency and then we'll worry about the relative frequency. Relative frequency as we know by now, we talked about it yesterday, we talked about it before yesterday. Relative frequency is measured in terms of percentages or in decimals or in fraction. So instead of simply saying four family had have three children, four family have three children, that's great, but four family out of how many? Four families, simply saying four families, that's absolute frequency. Once you tell me that it's four families out of 25 families, that becomes relative frequency. So we'll talk about, we'll do, worry about relative frequency in a second, but before we worry about relative frequency, frequencies, we first need to know the absolute frequencies. How many times an, an event took place? Let's find out, shall we? One, two, zero, four, one. 1, 2, 0, 4, 1, 3, 3, 1, 2, 0, 3, 3, 1, 2, 0, 4, 5, 2, 3, 2, 4, 5, 2, 3, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 1, 3, 2, 4, 2, 1, and finally, 30231 So we have it turns out that we have three families. Three families said that they have no children at all out of 25 families that we surveyed. Uh, five families said that they had one child. Seven families had ha have two children. Six families said that they had four, or three children rather, and three families had have two, four children, and one family said that they had five children. Let's plot it, shall we? Histogram. We do no longer need it. We no longer need the data, and we need the room. So let's erase all of this thing. We don't need any of this either. We're done with it. We can plot this this thing in terms of absolute frequency or we can plot it in terms of relative frequency. Since we have absolute frequency as of this right now, we're going to plot it, plot the absolute frequency. So here we go. So the frequencies are going to go on the top here, along the y-axis, and these are absolute frequencies. In other words, absolute number, four, five, six, seven, something like that. And it goes all the way from one family all the way up to seven families, so let's, let's, let's do up to eight. 
so that's because it's easier. So, so if this is eight, half is going to be around four somewhere here. Half of that is going to be around two, and half of this is going to be around six. Let's get going, shall we? So we have three families with zero children. Three families with zero children. How are you? I haven't done the y-axis yet. For a split second, I was confused. We do not have number of children on the y-axis. We have frequency. How often it is that a family told us that they have no children. That's the frequency. The actual number of children is going to appear on the x-axis. Number of kids. Number of kids. So here we go. It goes up to five. So we're going to put five markers. Let's put down zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So, three of them, three of them have no children. Three families that they have no children. This is two, this is four, so this will be three, and no children. There we go, this is zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Three of them. Then we have five families with one child, five families, so this is four, this is six, this is five. The width of each bar has to be the same, even though they do not look the same, they have to be the same. Because I'm doing it with free hands, so it's a little bit difficult. So, so far so good. Let's move on. Seven families said, said that they had two children. Two children is right here. Seven families, this is six, this is eight, this is seven. Then we had six families with three children, six families, six families with three children. Voila. Three families with four children, three families with four children. So this is this is four, this is two, this is three right here. It's going to be the same height as this one because this was three and this is three. See, there are three families with no children and three families with four children. And finally, five kids is a very, very rare phenomenon in this in this uh, in this uh, lo locality in this in, in this area in this village, because there is only one family who, that has five children. And technically, you should say five or more because we have to cover everyone. But anyway, so one family right here, one family right here. And that's it, that's your histogram right here. This is what is known as histogram. What do histograms show? If something like this is given in the exam, what does it show visually? Well, it shows several things. First of all, you can very easily locate the mode just by visual inspection. Even, even if you did not have any data, even if you did not know what was being measured, as long as we know that the top uh, the y axis is frequency, which it is, of course, in the histogram, we can tell the mode. The mode is something that happens more so often. And the, and the event that takes place most often is this event right here, the one that is the low, highest. It doesn't have to be in the center. It, ha it just happens to be in the center here, but it doesn't have to be center. Whichever bar was the longest one, that's the mode. It shows us the mode. What else it shows us? It shows us the spread, how widespread it is. Because if it goes all the way from 0 to 12, and there are very few, one family, two family, one family, two, because then it has a wide, wide spread. Uh, too much of a spread. It shows, it, obviously we cannot measure it by looking at it, but it does give us some, some sense of spread. It also gives us a very good idea of central tendency of the data. What does it mean, central tendency of data? Central tendency is just a very fancy way of saying, where do the data tend to cluster? Or well, here, they tend to cluster around two. As a matter of fact, you can see most families in this village had either one, two, or three children. This is where it tends to cluster. This is where it crowds. This is the, this is this is this, this is the central tendency. They tend to, they, they tend to, they tend to cluster around two, or if you want to be more uh, in your uh, more encompassing in your statement, you will say between one and three. Most family, overwhelming majority of the families in this village have either one, two, or three children, and I can tell that just by looking at. 
No, the only difference is that instead of absolute frequency, if we were to put a relative frequency, then instead of measuring absolute numbers, we would have percentages here. So if you, if you want to change this thing, instead of, instead of absolute frequency, if you want to do relative frequency, nothing would change here. It's, we will measure relative frequency, but we're going to have to figure out what the, how, 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 how common a given event is relative to all the other events. Simply telling me that I gave an exam, simply telling me that I gave an exam and five kids in my class got an A, well that's the absolute frequency. That's good to know that five kids in your class got an A. But how big is your class? If you tell me that five kids out of ten got an A, well that's 50%. That's very common occurrence. On the other hand, if you tell me that there are 100 kids in the class, well there is only 5% chance that a, that a given kid at, picked at random would have an A. That's the relative frequencies. So in order for us to figure, it, figure that out here, we need to know the total number of observations, which we already know obviously because it was given in the question to us that 25 families were surveyed. But we're going to figure it out from here. This, these numbers better add up, to, add up to 25. If they do not, if they do not, then something has gone wrong. We have made a mistake. We missed something. If we have more than 25 or fewer than 25, then something has gone wrong. Let's figure it out. I see 7, I see 3, 7 plus 3 is 10, I see a 5, that's 15, and then finally we'll have 6, and 1, and 3. You see? This 3 and this 7 makes a 10, that's a 15, and then these are 10. So it is 25. It is 25. And since we want it in percentage, so this is the absolute frequency. Now, when we're dealing with absolute frequencies, as we talked about it just yesterday and day before yesterday, very rarely you will see the you will hear the term absolute. They would, it, it's just called up, it, it's just called frequency. And if it doesn't say relative frequency, then it's understood that it is an absolute number, four, five, seven. When we talk about relative frequency, it can be expressed in terms of percentages, in terms of fraction, in terms of decimal. Here we'll express it as a percentage. Since there are only 25 occurrences, since there are only 25 observations. Figuring, it out percent, figuring out our percentage is very simple because word percent means out of 100. This is 3 out of 25. 3 out of 25. Well, if you want to convert 3 out of 25 into percentage, the word percent means out of 100. How do we convert the bottom into 100? It's very simple. Multiply the bottom by 4 and now it is out of 100. Since we multiply the bottom by 4, we must multiply the top by 4. I do know, I do realize that I'm pointing out the bloody obvious to you, I've, of course you understand it, but it is my job to point out the bloody obvious, that is my forte, do you understand? So it's 12 out of 100, that's 12 percent. So in other words, take each frequency multiplied by 4 and you, have, you will have your relative frequency in percentages. So instead of expressing it in fraction, we'll express them in percentages, relative frequencies. Relative frequency and we'll express them in percentage. So here we go. 3 times 4 is 12, 5 times 4 is 20, 7 times 4 is 28, 6 times 4 is uh, 24, 3 times 4 is 12, and this is 4. And of course when we add up these figures they also better, better add up to 100. And of course they would. Why wouldn't they? So we have an 8 and a 2 that's a 10. We have an 8 and a 2, that's a 10. Then we have a 4 and a 4 and a 2. So that's another 10, that's 20. So 0, carry 2. Stay with me in the story, okay? Stay with me in the story. So here we go. 2, 2, 2, and 2. That's 8, and there's the 1, and there's the 1. One more time. 2, 2, 2, that's, that's 6, and there's 2 here. That's 8. 1 and a 1. That's 10, you see? So now we have relative frequency expressed in percentages. Expressed in percentages. And we could have done the same thing here. So instead of absolute frequency, we made the relative frequency, and these numbers now no longer represent the absolute numbers. What they represent is two, where it's just where it's just where is the mark where we have a marker for two, that marker should say eight. Two times four is eight. This should say eight. Where we have four, that marker should say four times four times four is sixteen. So it's just gonna go up by eight. This should be twenty-four, because it was six. 6 times 4 is 24. And where it says 8, instead of 8, it should say 32. And it's the same thing as before. Except now, it's the relative frequency. It's being measured in percentages. And if you were to plot these numbers, it will look exactly like this, what we see here. 
So something like this will be presented to us in the exam. A histogram will be given to us in the exam, either expressed in terms of absolute frequencies or relative frequencies. And then we'll be asked, and then we'll be asked a couple of questions. And we have to answer those questions, obviously. So let's ask ourselves a couple of questions. Okay, let's answer a couple of questions. What I want you to do, as always, I remind you, when the question is put on the blackboard, if you wish, pause the video, do it yourself, and then resume the video, and then compare your work against the work that you and I do together. You get more out of it. So here's the first question. Blast it. Actually, I did not make any questions. The book doesn't have any questions, and I do. I, I did not make any questions. So here's the first question for you. What is the mode? Well, the mode is this thing right here, too. It's very simple. Mode is two. Uh, what else can we ask ourselves? Just make up a couple of questions. Uh, here's a simple question. If something like this is given to us, they might ask us, what are the odds that if one family is picked at random out of those 25, if one family is picked at random out of those out of those 25 families, by looking at this thing, by the way, looking at this histogram, I'm not going to write it down on the blackboard. What are the odds that that family has two or fewer children? Two or fewer children. What are the odds? So we do not have this. It just doesn't exist. It's not given to us. It doesn't exist. Nothing exists. All we are told, all we are given is this histogram in terms of percentages, and they're asking us what are the odds that if we were to pick a family at random that that family happens to have two or fewer children. Well, right here, two or fewer children. Well, this is eight, this is 16, this must be 12. So that's 12, so zero was 12%. How many families, what are the odds that a family picked at random has one child? One is right here, this is 16, this is 24, this must be 20, right here, this is 20. And two children, two children is 24, this is 30, so this must be 28. There you go, there is your answer. So, oh, there you go. 2 plus 8 is 10, so that's 10. 20, 20 plus 20 is 40, it's 60%. What are the odds that the family picked at random has two or fewer children? And the answer choices will be expressed either in terms of percentages or in fraction. 60%. Or three out of five, or they might just say 0.6 in terms of probability. So there we go. Even though I had uh, not, uh, I had not uh, made a couple of questions ahead of time, which I should have, I forgot. But we just answered a couple of questions. That's all. Simple questions. The first question was, what is the mode? The mode here is two. Uh, what are the odds that a family picked at random has two or fewer children? The answer is the odds are 60%. <clears throat> and when you add up the percentages, when we had the data in front of us, if you add up the percentages, you should get 60%. We had 12, we had 20, we had, tw uh, we had 28. 28 and 12, that's 40, and now the 20 is 60, you see. Tomorrow, in the next video, we'll do what you see on the following page, on page number 291, the pie chart. And again, we'll do the same thing. We'll first put together a pie chart and then we'll answer a couple of questions and this time I promise you that I do have a couple of questions prepared ahead of time because I'm looking at my notes and they are right there. Do you understand? So we'll do those tomorrow. Actually I have three questions. Bye now.